Jacob Rees Mock. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Lanning. Thank you for coming in to see us. But that's actually the point, isn't it? The UK government believed in free trade, could be completely relaxed about Chinese goods coming in. But one of the great opportunities of being outside uh, the customs union is that we'll be free to set our own tariffs, and those could be much lower, providing cheaper goods, particularly food, clothing, and footwear, benefiting the poorest in our society most. This is the, one of the real opportunities of leaving. And we can do it unilaterally. That's a, that's a question. It's a question. I mean, it all depends on what so far I have to say is unknown, which is what does UK believe <coughs> is the right trade policy for UK? But it's a choice we could. We make. have we have no clue. When I say we, I mean observers, and notably on the continent. If the question is, what is the trade policy of UK once it has recovered its autonomy in trade policy, what you just said is an option, which is uh, totally open, and there, this, this view exists within the UK political spectrum. Patrick Minford was a great advocate of that for a long time. Uh, whether this is uh, the UK government position, that uh, UK will be uh, totally open, I'm not sure, maybe. And B, even if it's a totally open unilateral zero tariff, uh, you will need to check the standards the precautionary, the safety of, of cars, of toys, of tow, of, of dolls, this will need to be checked. But well, we won't need to check it from the European Union. We could say that we believe the European Union, and we could say this unilaterally, has satisfactory standards, and that therefore we are willing to carry on taking things from the European Union, and therefore there's no need for any border, hard border, between Northern Ireland and Republic of Ireland. It would be a unilateral decision by the UK. Yeah. And that's illegitimate in WTA rules. First, we're only talking about goods here, and we've left aside the big issue of uh, services. And second, if UK autonomously decides that uh, the safety of things uh, coming from EU is fine, this doesn't mean that the EU will do uh, the that's, same thing. That's true, that's true. Uh, uh, not least, not least, because uh, uh, the EU needs to be sure that what it imports, which is the case with the uh, UK, within the internal market at present, fits a number of precautionary requirements which are protecting health, the safety uh, and the rest. So the, this issue of what we call in our jargon non-tariff measures is absolutely crucial. Now, whether, again, whether the UK government has as a trade policy uh, to be 100% open, duty-free, cut-free, zero tariff, or not, is of course not for me to say. But so far, so far, I haven't seen a sort of clear picture of what it mm. should or could be. No, but what I'm really asking is under WTO rules, there is a clear route that the UK could take that would ensure that there were no additional complications in goods coming into the United Kingdom. Because that would be under our control. You can always unilaterally open your trade more than uh, what you have accepted as a, a, a minimum uh, requirement in WTO, of Thank course. You. Which is why, by the way, bilateral agreements are WTO plus. And you can you can do. I mean, in some areas, for instance, when I was EU trade commissioner, I made sure that the EU would adopt a regime which is called everything but arms where EU imports duty-free quota-free from the least developed countries without any duty, of course with technical controls. That was an autonomous trade opening which was perfectly uh, acceptable under WTO terms. Thank you. Okay.